Terrence Bud Crawford fans say that Terrence Crawford will not only outbox Canelo, but it's possible that he will be the one to even stop Canelo. Canelo fans say that if Bud Crawford even dreams about beating Canelo, much less knocking him out, he better wake up, go buy the most expensive bottle of tequila he could find, call Canelo Alvarez on FaceTime, crack the bottle on his own head, and apologize. Here's what I think about it. Welcome to Tough Blood Boxing. I am locked in, and let's get ready to talk about it! Okay, okay, so we're going to talk about the truth about this whole conversation from my perspective, the tough perspective, the true unbiased fight fan perspective. Everybody knows I love Bud. I respect Canelo, uh, despite what a lot of people like to say, despite the jabs that I take at Canelo. Canelo is a, an elite level, great fighter with an impressive resume. Uh, we question it, his moves as of late, but the fact is, like I said in earlier videos, he's earned the right to move the way he's moving. However, we do want to see him fight some of the tougher competition in his weight class. With that said, before I even get into the content of Terrence Crawford versus Canelo, I want to make a correction. I was wrong about some information that I put out there when comparing Canelo to some of the other great Mexican fighters who I still don't hold him as, as in as high esteem. And that could be because of my generational bias. But I said in a statement that he doesn't have the Hall of Fame is on his resume that um, you know, the Oscar De La Hoyas and the Hernandez's and the Julio Cesar Chavez and Antonio Barreras and uh, the Juan Manuel Mar Marquis. You know, I said that he doesn't have all the famous on his resume like that. And while he may not have as many, I was wrong. Shout out to Edward, you know what I'm saying? AKA Breadman. He definitely let me know what it was. He did a recent interview with Mill City, you know what I'm saying? And Everybody who doesn't know who Mill City is, you should go subscribe. They have fantastic interviews. If you sub to my little channel, I know you subscribe to his, but it's up in the shout out box in case you need to know how to spell it so you can go and check out some of those interviews. Now, here's the truth of the matter, right? Bradman reminded me how much of boxing I don't know ish about when it comes to Canelo by telling me and reminding me that Canelo has Floyd Mayweather, which I know he has Miguel Cotto, Hall of Famer, also Shane Mosley, on his resume. Those are Hall of Fame fighters, so I do apologize if I misled any boxing fans. Canelo Alvarez does have HOF fighters on his resume, and those are three of them. Shout out to Brett Man for making me eat my words and come back and have to confess the truth. Now, with that said, there's a conversation going on right now, especially after Jamel Charlo's lackluster performance against Canelo, about Terrence Bud Crawford and Canelo. Initially, Bud Crawford said the weight class was too high for him. And then once it started circulating that, and I, and I think personally that it was really Canelo coming out saying that he wouldn't get any credit. And I felt like Canelo was very intelligent in the way he answered that question in the Breakfast Club because he put Terrence Crawford in a situation where he had to kind of look at his own words when it came to people saying that Javante Tank Davis was going to come up and fight Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford said he's too small, I won't get no credit for it. Canelo Alvarez, in turn, used Terrence Crawford's own words against him. And right quick, I like English-speaking Canelo. I really do like English-speaking Canelo. It, 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 I mean, it really does give us a, a look into his personality that we really didn't know about when he was only speaking Spanish. And he's a pretty funny guy, just naturally not even mean in the beat. But with that said, everybody knows what kind of channel this is. We rock with Buck Crawford. I love Buck Crawford on this channel. And I've been supporting Bud forever. So... I'm not trying to be a fanboy. Let's talk about how the fight with Canelo would look in my eyes if Buck Crawford was to jump up to 168 pounds and fight Canelo Alvarez. Now, we gave Jamel Chalo a lot of slack for not even trying to win, right? For not even engaging at pretty much any time during the fight and staying on his bicycle. I would argue that the fight would almost look similarly with the exception that Bud Crawford would, he would accumulate more points. See, Buddy Crawford, you don't beat him with just physicality, okay? You have to be a chess player. You have to beat Bud in the mind game of boxing. You have to mentally beat Bud in boxing because Bud is thinking about everything from the perspective of a chess player. Like, he's, he's mentally in the game. It's going to take more than just being bigger and stronger to beat him. However, 
we have to remember Canelo is not just some big, strong, rock him, sock him type of fighter. He's a very, he has a very, very high skill ceiling. He's been in the ring with literally every style, just like Terrence Crawford, which would make this a good fight. Both of them are dogs. Both of them are going to come to fight. Both of them are going to train like they never trained before. You have to respect both of their work ethics in and outside of the ring. I think that Buck Crawford may be the cleaner outside the ring boxer, but Canelo does not let anything outside the ring interfere with his preparation and his training for a fight. So we got to take that into account. He's naturally bigger than Bud. He's acclimated to the weight class. He's stronger than Bud, I believe. Now, is he going to be able to throw Bud around? I don't think so because he wasn't really able to throw Charlo around, right? He hike locked him a little bit. Charlo did tie him up. He couldn't really wrestle free all of the time. Not that he really gave that much effort trying to do that. Right? I felt Canelo didn't really step on the gas because he didn't have to take it up to that next notch. You know what I'm saying? Like when we saw him fight Triple G, the first two fights, Triple G put Canelo in a situation where Canelo had to step it up a notch, right? If you think about that 12th round in the first fight, even though I gave it to the, the fight to Triple G, close decision, right? Canelo Alvarez, he 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 came out assertive. He came out with, with purpose, right? He came out like... You know, it, it was all enough, right? And, and it was a dog fight between him and Triple G in that last round. And Canelo did very, very well. I would argue that he even won that round. Now, we all know Terrence Crawford, he's not just going to sit back. If he feels like he's down, he, we all know what he did to Sean Porter. He's going to step it up. Now, do I think Bud can hurt Canelo? I think that it would take an accumulation of heavy power shots for Bud to break Canelo down. But I don't think Bud Crawford has enough power based on the fighters that Canelo has been in the ring with to deter Canelo Alvarez from implementing his game plan. So I do think that Buck Crawford, it's possible that he could beat Canelo. I don't think it's possible that he knocks out Canelo. I think at this point in Canelo's career, unless he's like some kind of old man, we just got to come to the effect that we may not even see Canelo touch the canvas. Okay? I know Bud is strong. I know he's powerful. I know he's a dog. I love him just like everybody else is love him. But if we talk him realistically, him jumping up three weight classes, and if he goes to 154 and gets some fights in there, there'll be two weight classes. But either way, him jumping up to face Canelo will be a great fight. It'll be a great chess match. He's not going to rock him soccer with Canelo. I see it more going like he's going to have to pick the post through the hell out of of uh, out of Canelo Alvarez the whole fight. I, I see him taking pages out of Floyd Mayweather's book. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fighting off the back foot, running Canelo into counters because Canelo is going to press the action and then maybe stepping it up to him when he sees that the latter rounds, like the ninth, 10th, 11th rounds, Canelo starts trying to take some rounds off to, to regather some strength. You might see Thomas Crawford step it up and outplant Canelo. I don't think Terrence Crawford is going to stop Canelo unless it's due to a really, really bad cut. I think that Canelo at any point in a fight from round one to round 12 does have the power and the enthusiasm, right, and the will to knock Bud Crawford out. Bud Crawford being so much smaller coming up, you know, naturally, he's coming up from like 135. And even though we saw Manny's Pacquiao's power carry up, I feel like we would see Bud Crawford's power carry up, but not to the point where it's going to be anything that would be able to outdo it like heavyweight. And so, as much as I love Terrence Buck Crawford, we have to really be realistic when we make making these comparisons. I know we want to see Terrence Crawford do something nobody's ever done before, which we already have him as far as the men in the full belt ever are concerned. I know we want to see him be three times undisputed. The closest to that, I feel like, would have been with Jamel Charlo, or maybe Jamel Charlo, for some reason, doesn't beat Tim Zhu, right? Um, then Tim Zhu, right, and becomes three times undisputed. But as far as him jumping up all the way to 168 to fight with Canelo, I think it'll be a great fight. I think it'll be entertaining for the fans. I think Crawford doesn't come to lay down. I think Crawford is not going to try to rock him, sock him, but just the type of fighter that he is and, and the type of team that he has around him, they're going to know how to get him to 168 pounds to distribute the weight, where, where they're going to put the weight on his legs, whether the weight is going to be the majority of his upper body. See, when you got teammates that are truly, truly scientifically involved in, in, in how to put on weight and, and how to maximize muscle and how to maximize activity in that weight class, you know, a lot of people say that Buck Crawford jumping up to 168 is going to make him a lot slower. I agree. But with that said, I also do agree that Buck Crawford has a better IQ. Than Canelo. 
Okay, don't get me wrong. Skill sets, you could just go tit for tat on skill set. But I think Buck Crawford may not, knowing that he may not be as fast as he usually is at 168, and we don't know that for sure, but just guessing just based on basic bi biology, that he may not be as fast as he normally is at 168. The fact is, I think he does have some advantages, and Canelo has some advantages. Now, Buck Crawford is going to have to use a lot of his counter punching. He's going to have to set a lot of traps. I'm thinking Bernard Hopkins. Victor Post too light, but I'm thinking more or less like he's going to have to adopt more of a Bernard Hopkins kind of style in order to deal with Canelo Alvarez. So with that said, let's go ahead and quickly get into some attributes. I'm not going to make this a long video, but all over the internet, all over Twitter, Bud is on his, 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 his I'm the king parade right now. He's he's getting all the, ac the accolades he deserves. Cameras are following him everywhere. He's finally getting the credit that he has been denied so many years that he deserved and he's getting it now. But we also have to stay realistic. Now, is it impossible for Buck Crawford to be Canelo? No, it wasn't impossible for Janelle Charlo to be Canelo until Janelle Charlo stepped in that ring and fought the way he fought. I don't believe Buck Crawford will prepare like Charlo prepared. I think Buck Crawford, knowing he's going in there with 168, is going to be in there sparring like heavyweight and 168. So by the time he get to Canelo, he'll know what those punches feel like. You know, it's, it's a known fact that the majority of fights are running training, right? And both of these guys train for every fight. Like, you know, they're going in there with, with the death. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the monster opponent. Shout out to Buck Crawford, as y'all can see in this little picture here, picture video that I got. Um, He got... Uh, two times undisputed championship WBC ring. That's dope. As a gold lover, I really love that ring. That ring is like three of the rings I got on my hand right now. Maybe all four. <laughs> you know what I mean? But salute to Bud out there getting his just desserts. But the fact still remains when it comes to him fighting Canelo. We get on Canelo all the time, but you cannot deny. I know you want to see Canelo fight David Benavidez, but this is a question that... I had to ask myself today, right? Because it's easy to forget what Canelo has already done. He's been doing it for so long, right? It's easy to take it for granted and just forget what he's done in the sport of boxing. But we want him to fight David Benavidez. A lot of people want him to fight David Morrell, you know, or, uh, Demetrius Andrade. These are fights that I feel like he should be having as they're in his division. They will be his most competitive fights, to be honest with you. But what are we going to then... Now, let me ask you a question. If... Canelo Alvarez, which I think he's capable of doing it, right? I love David Benavidez. I want him to be a superstar. I love his style of fight, and he's action-packed. But the question remains, right? I don't think he automatically beats Canelo, and I don't think Canelo was scared of him. Now, I do think he's high risk, low reward as far as Canelo sees him, right? Okay. Now, with that said, if Canelo beats Benavidez, do we then bow down and say Canelo is as great as a lot of his fans think he is? Like, what really is it going to take for us to give Canelo his credit? Because I don't want to be biased. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a Canelo hater. I, I love Canelo's skill. Triple G, I felt, see, the thing that made me not like Canelo was, number one, the, the steroid thing, okay? That's always going to affect my judgment of a fighter if he ever pops dirty, right? Because then you got to question his other wins. And the fact that He's got so many scorecard controversies. That put a tarnish on him. If it wasn't for those two things, I would have Canelo one or two on my pound for pound even today with the losses. You understand? But it's just those things like that that kind of steered me away from really being able to appreciate what he brings, right? But seeing how he dealt with Jamel Charlo, hearing people really talk about Bud Crawford jumping up to 168 to fight Canelo now, they fight at 160, I think Bud has a better chance, but then we're talking about a depleted Canelo Alvarez, right? Is it really Canelo Alvarez, right? So if he jumps up to 168 and we're realistically thinking from the perspective of boxing fans who are not being fanboys are just biased towards one boxer just because we really, really like him. I would say that would be Bud Crawford's toughest challenge to date. He's going to be in there with somebody who can match his skill set different ways, right? Skill sets in, in, in different attributes, but it still evens it out and even rises a little above 
to Canelo because Canelo is the naturally bigger guy and he he's more power. He has he just like Buck Crawford has that one punch knockout power at welterweight and possibly at 154. We just don't know how far up Bud's power is gonna carry, but we know for sure that Canelo can stop somebody at 168. We know for sure that Canelo can damage somebody at 168 and he can really hurt a smaller fighter coming up in weight as we witness with Jamel Charlo. So in my opinion, if Bud Crawford and Canelo Alvarez was the goal for the fight, right, I would have to honestly, from my perspective, being that they're both undefeated, I would have to say the burden of proof is on Bud Crawford. I would root for Bud Crawford. But if somebody put a gun in my head and told me that I had to bet money on it, I would bet Canelo, you know, you know, by decision or stoppage, to be honest with you, by decision or stoppage. And, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. But like I said, now, if Bud does win, Bud can win a decision. He's going to have to be fast on his feet, right? Um, I don't think he's going to knock Canelo. I don't think anybody's going to knock Canelo out. But I think he's going to have to do more like a pick the post do type of fight. And that might not be the most exciting fight, but it will for sure be a lot better than we saw Jamel Charlo uh, doing that win. And, and let's check, take a look at some attributes right quick. Because like I said, I didn't want to make this a long video. I just wanted to get on here and get in the comment section. Let me know if you're a Bud fan. It's okay to say, nah, nah, nah. I'm sticking with, you know what I'm saying? The Omaha boy, he stops Spence. It's okay to believe that if that's where you want it. It's your money, right? If you feel like Canelo is the, what, just dog walk Bud and Bud has no chance at all, it's okay to feel that way too. I have my opinion. You have your opinion. You don't have to agree with everything I say. All you got to do is do what I do and love to score the box. Right. So Canelo Alvarez has much more experience in the ring. Right. But, you know, like I said, both of them are very disciplined in and outside of the ring. Both of them are very grounded. Both of them understand. Right. And Canelo is going to train, even though Terrence Crawford is coming up. Canelo is still going to train like he about to fight a heavyweight. Canelo is going to train like he going in there to fight somebody his size and bigger. So Bud Crawford, we already know how he get down. Right. So now we got five, eight. 5'8", so they're both the same height. Canelo Alvarez is has a 70 and a half inch arm reach. Bud Crawford has a 74 inch arm reach, which we all know. Now, that is going to come into play. Now, this is the thing. I feel like Canelo Alvarez stays active, right? Bud Crawford is not as active as Canelo, but that doesn't mean we all saw how sharp he was when he went in there with Spence, right? But so that doesn't really mean anything as far as activity is concerned. They're both active enough that you can't use the excuse to rust or layoffs or anything like that. Now, with Bud having a longer reach, you know that jab is going to come into play. You know the uppercut is going to come into play. You know his speed is going to come into play because he's the smaller guy and he's a southpaw. Now, it just so happens that Canelo deals with southpaws and orthodox fighters the same way. We've seen him rise and shine against southpaws. We've seen him rise and shine against orthodox fighters. But... As far as stance is concerned, I really don't know. They both gonna have great trainers in their corner, right? Uh, it's all dependent on the game plan. Bud is gonna have to have a hell of a game plan. I don't think he's gonna be able to deter Canelo Alvarez, but I think that if he is gonna be Canelo Alvarez, he's gonna have to pull Canelo Alvarez into the later rounds. And I mean, talking about like to the seventh and eighth round. And then the question is, will Bud Crawford's stamina still be the same at that weight class? So realistically speaking, I got Canelo Alvarez coming out on top of that fight, although it's not impossible for Bud to pull out a victory by decision, okay? And knowing against uh, about Canelo, he's gonna have to run away with the rounds, right? Now we do know that Canelo does have his feet planted. Crawford has fast feet, he has great foot movement, you know, he knows how to navigate around the ring. And we've seen Canelo activity slow down. Like when Jamel Charlo was avoiding Canelo, you can avoid Canelo. That, that's what Jamel Charlo showed us. Canelo can be avoided, even though he's going to trap you against the ropes every once in a while. You know, I just feel like with Bud's wrestling background and, you know, Bud might be punching off the clinch. You know, it's going to be a lot of stuff going in there. But like I said, uh, he's going to either have to pick the post um Canelo Alvarez or get on his Bernard Hopkins-ish. But for the most part, I think that I got uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez betting on that fight. I wouldn't really make any money in this fight because I'm not trying to bet against my boy Bud Crawford. 
You understand what I'm saying? I would enjoy it as a fan, but I definitely think it'll be an entertaining fight. I don't think Buck Crawford would lay down. I don't think Buck Crawford would do it just for the money, and I don't think that the fight would reflect that. Buck Crawford does like to make money. He's already rich, but there's nothing wrong with being richer, but we also know that he cares about his legacy and how people perceive him, you know, when he's in his performance, and we do know that he has an entire state on his back. We know Canelo has Mexico on his back for the most part, right? A lot of Mexicans don't really rock with Canelo come to find out. They rock with David Benavidez because they feel like Canelo doesn't run towards a lot of the smoke. But like I said, early in Canelo's career, he has a really good resume and he ran towards all the smoke. That's just is what it is. Now get in the comment section. Let me know if you agree, you disagree. Hit the like button, share the video, get other people involved with the conversation. Follow me on Twitter at Tough Club Boxing. I'm out. You ain't gotta go home, but you gotta get the hell up out of here.